Um, you want to um, tell me who you are and and who what? Who am it, I? Yeah. Oh my God, that's a long question. Uh, my name is Carter Foster. Mm -hmm. How's that? That's good. I work as a curator at the Blanton Museum of Art in Austin, Texas, and I'm also deputy director for curatorial affairs, meaning I work with all the other curators to sort. Of, yeah. Sorry, my so my intro question is is what was it like having an artist living in your house for two weeks and you can be honest well no it was fine i mean I, well it'd be like I don't, I don't i've always lived alone um it's the longest i think it's probably the longest anyone's ever stayed with me huh. um so it wasn't so much having an artist it was just having another person yeah but it was interesting to have someone like you know be able to go and visit someone like literally go upstairs and uh -huh. see what you've been working on and like what books you pulled out because obviously I, I have tons of art books and, yeah so, you know, just to, you know, it was interesting to hear about, you know, how, how it was being beneficial to you, you know. Yeah. Because um, it was your idea, I, I think. Yeah, I think it was your idea. Oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I just yeah. offered it. Or you said something about a residency, and I said, oh, you can do a residency in my house. Yeah. Kind of yeah. handedly. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't sure if you were serious, and then... I don't know that I was serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Yeah, I mean, I think it was a really generous gesture on your part, and um, this, uh, for me, on my side, it was it was awesome. So this, my follow-up question to that first question is, do you think this is something you would recommend to um, other, you know, art professionals that you have that might think of doing something similar? Well, like if they had an extra room or... I mean, yeah, I mean, if they wanted to, sure. I mean, I, I would, like, like, I think, I guess what I think of as the benefit of residencies is that there's certain aspect of daily life taking care of you for you and to give you free time to work. So maybe mm -hmm. in my case, that was just giving you space to work in and, yeah. and being in a new place, which is always good. It always check, makes you, you know, think in a different way, be somewhere new and you have to adjust and whatever. And yeah. The culture is different or whatever. Yeah. Even this, you know, the light is different, the space is different, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah. Well, I, you know, I think the... But you made it the residency. Like, I didn't, I didn't, like, I just feel like I gave you space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we both really stepped into an unknown, in a right. sense. We both took a risk, because yeah. um, we didn't really know what to expect. And, um, and I think that, that shows gumption on both our parts. So, um, I'm going to, I'm curious about... Um, your, your work at the Blanton. Like, what, what would you say... And, like your favorite thing about it. Right? My favorite thing is dealing with the art. You know, I have, we have a collect. I mean, I'm a collection. I, I'm really driven by, um, as a curator, probably fundamentally most by my interest in collections of art that museums hold and trust for history. You yeah. Know? And and I like do and and so all the activities around that and getting to be around art and you know to some degree artists, uh, but also like historical collections. I mean, that's just I just love having collections to work with and, okay. um, and, I, and I, I, you know, I believe in what museums do. I mean, not, you know, museums are perfect and, you know, there's lots of issues swirling now about colonialism and decolonizing yeah. museums and all that. Yeah. I understand. That's all, you know, those are good things to talk about, but, um, but, but I do fundamentally, like museums fundamentally, you know, have given me a lot personally. I, I never felt, um, you know, uh, like I didn't, I didn't belong in a museum, so, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, I guess I'm lucky that way. Yeah. And from some of the things you've said about acquisitions, the collection is not a static thing, right? That's no, something never. that's always evolving. And yeah, I mean, most museums, I mean, most art museums acquire work if they're, if they're not what we call a kunsthal, you know, they're actively acquiring work in their areas of collecting, which yeah. you know, varies from museum to museum. But I, I personally have been formed as a curator by the collections I've worked with. And I've been lucky enough to work at some of the best museums in the country with great collections like Cleveland, Philadelphia, um, and I love, it's fun to, to dive into those collections whenever you work someplace new. Uh, yeah. And, and learn about them. And then, you know, the, the, the work that I've done has usually been driven, at least to some degree, by the collections. Um, right. For example, the Hopper Drawing Show that I did was done because no one had, there was, here was these hundreds of drawings by Hopper that no one had really taken a close look at. So. Um, you know, you left the Whitney, you were there for how long? Uh, 11 years. 11 years. And you came to the Blanton. What what would you say has been the trade off for you in terms of like well, what did you? Well, the trade off for me personally was just, I have a huge social network in New York. Most of my friends live in New York. Um, yeah. And you know a lot of in the art world, your social life and your professional life overlap a lot. That's just sort of the nature of it. Sure. 
And, um, and so, uh, you know, I do, people ask me if I miss New York, I, I miss that aspect of New York, especially. Yeah. Um, and I loved working at the Whitney. It was an amazing place to work, but I don't know that I, I I'm also very excited about the work I'm doing here. So yeah. it's a very different, I play a very different role at the Blanton than I did at the Whitney. So, so I've enjoyed that, the, the new role I play and cause I've been learning more. Yeah. I've been learning different things. I mean, the, the Whitney, I was I wouldn't say I was. Um, getting bored, but it was, you know, I was I sort of had done it for 11 years and it felt yeah. like, I felt okay about, about leaving. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. And the bland's interesting because it's still kind of, it partly in a way, it's still forming itself. I mean, it's, okay. it's a younger, it's a very young museum. I mean, the building, the bland, the bland was a, a, a gallery before it was a, called a museum and it didn't have Oh, really? Building. Yeah, it was called the Huntington Gallery. Which one was this? This was, well, the museum building that we're in now was built 12 years ago, and that's when the name became the Blanton Museum of Art. Um, so it was, it was just called the Huntington Gallery. The collection existed partly. Um, wow, so the, it's pretty youthful. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like young. in its adolescence. Yeah, yeah, or something like that, yeah. Yeah, um, and you've so, spoken very highly of the director. So yeah, it's like that's somebody yeah. who you really yeah, like great, working with. and Very much so, yeah. Very much so. Learned a lot from her. So, yeah. um, and it's, yeah. it's, I, what, I get, what I like about my job now is that I get to help shape the exhibition program in a way I didn't at the Whitney and, okay. and help shape the, you know, both exhibitions, acquisitions, and then we have, a, we have, you know, three rotating spaces in addition to our main exhibition space. So all that has to get planned out you know, right. years in advance. Right. And so it's, it's interesting to do that. Right. I enjoy doing that. Yeah. That's cool. Well, obviously, you know, this, your, your life in a sense has been poured into this whole you know, creating an art museum in this context for people to come and experience art. So what I'm curious about, and I, I know you, 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 everybody has stories about their youth. Was there something in particular that happened when you were young that tipped you there in was. this direction? Was what was that? Moment. I had um, something I really remember. Um, my best friend growing up was a guy named Frank Summers. Um, and his mother, Kay Summers, was, uh, an, she worked at the High Museum in Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up in Atlanta. And she, um, she, I don't know exactly what her role was. I think she was head of the education department. But she was married to an architect. And compared to my parents, they had a very different aesthetic. They had a kind of modern house. Mm -hmm. And they had like, what I now know was sarin and furniture, which was like contemporary furniture at the wow. time. It was, yeah. you know, 60s. Uh, 70s, and um, they had African art. They had, um, you know, uh, like po images of art, of work by famous artists, some yeah. some paintings, and so just different. But I remember her coming home from a party. I think at the High Museum. I was spending the night at their house. Yeah. And she showed me an image of a work by Alexander Calder, and I um, <laughs> and I saw these like flat shapes of color over yeah. across the paper, and I, you know, it was just I didn't understand. It didn't seem to me like it took much to do that. Yeah. And then she she said, "No, look, this is a seal with a ball on its nose." And so yeah. it's like this, you know, this tapering shape of a seal. And so I saw that immediately, and then I thought, "Oh, like that's what an artist does. Right. Like that's what an artist. I, like I totally understood suddenly, like in that moment. Okay, that like I yeah. understand." We're we're in Austin, and I know when you were in high school, you told me you were reading Rolling Stone magazine. Right. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so. Tell me three musicians, three bands, whoever, like, for you, like, who are well, they? Well, Led Zeppelin is probably my favorite, like, rock band. Of okay. Time. I mean, I just, like, I, and I, I listened to them when I was a teenager, and I still listen to them. And I still yeah. just, I think they're just amazing. Um, Prince is someone I'm a huge fan of. And also, I would, I, I, when I was a teenager, I, I read Rolling Stone because... I saw Jackson Brown on the cover of Rolling Stone in the 80s, his album Holdout had come out, and, uh -huh. and I was really drawn to him and the way he looked, and yeah. from that I, um, I, I started buying his music, and he um, is this kind of singer-songwriter. I mean, I, I don't know if he's one of my favorite musicians now, but he had a huge right. role in my life, and I, right. and I still love his music. Um, so then you're not going to you're not gonna add Kiss in there? No, I'm not going <laughs> to add Kiss. I'm not gonna add Kiss. <laughs> Shitty music. I don't like shitty music. Oh, whoa. <laughs> That's negative. All right. Well, thank you, Carter. I really appreciate it. All right.